Hi guys, it's Katie here with Life the Mundane and welcome back to my channel. If you're like me, you love all about reading, you've fallen in love, you've clicked, ordered, your order comes in and you open the box to see all of these amazing pieces. But now what? How do I put all this together? What are even all of these things? Well, today we're gonna answer those questions and some more, so let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos, and on this channel we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are gonna help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little moments. Before we jump into what's in your box and how to get it prepped and organized for a seamless transition into starting your lessons, I do wanna let you guys know that I have gone through all the levels, level one through four of All About Reading with several of my kids. We have really enjoyed this program and I have absolutely fallen in love. However, the first level that we started with was actually before they had come out with the latest edition. I've always wanted to get the latest edition, but just hadn't taken the time to do that. And so now that I'm getting ready to start teaching my next half of my kids and the younger three, they're all about reading, I really wanted to get that. So I, so I just received my box, my shipment of all the new level one things, and I wanted to show you guys as I started prepping my material, how you might do so as well. So first let's start with what's in the box. First thing you'll notice if you have a teacher's guide. This is an incredibly critical tool that you will need for helping you with your lessons. It's gonna give you everything you need, including a checklist at the beginning of each lesson that's going to tell you what, what materials you need to gather, any concepts that you've previously taught that they'll give you a little review of it so that you know. It'll even give you little tips or tricks or for different problems that might come up throughout the lesson. You will have your readers. Depending on the level that you have ordered, you will either have two or three readers, and this is gonna be something your children are gonna work on reading through all throughout the year. This is one of my favorite parts about All About Reading for many reasons, but I won't get into all of that right now. We also have the student activity set. This includes flashcards. The yellow ones are your phonogram cards and the green ones are your word cards. These are gonna be very critical in each lesson. Also in your student activity section, you're going to find your student activity book. This is going to have everything from hands-on games and activities for you to use with your kids, as well as reading fluency sheets and practice sheets. You will also notice a sheet of stickers to help with your child's progress chart, and you will have a word viewfinder card. This just helps your children who get really overwhelmed by the massive amount of words on a page to be able to just look at one word at a time to decode that and then slide it on to move on. It also makes a great bookmark. With this, I will say that I have made a video on 10 things you should know about All About Reading that gives you tips if you're still in the research phase, but even if you're currently using their program, you may wanna check out that video to learn a little bit more about how to use this program to its maximum potential. But how do we actually prepare the materials? What do I do with all this now? You could jump straight into the material and start teaching lesson one, but that's not what I would personally recommend. The first step that I would personally recommend is to take that handy dandy teacher's book and go drop it off at your local Office Depot or equivalent store and ask them to spiral bound it. It doesn't cost very much at all and if you have an HSLDA membership card, it actually costs even less. You can take this in and they will spiral bound it. The reason why I like it is because although you can use it like this, being able to fold it over and have it lay flat just makes it easier to handle when you're working with kids. I also like the fact that it protects my binding. Um, I, like I said, I've used this for many years and have never had any issues with my books coming apart and part of that has to do with the spiral binding. Next up is your flashcards. Like I said, these have a perforation on them makes them really easy to just fold over and pull apart. You will want to have a designated spot to put these in once you get done. You can use the All About Reading um, word card holder and that works really great. You can hold multiple levels of reading within one box or you can use a simple index card holder. Now there will be extra wiggle room on the side as these are not quite the size of an index card but that can work just fine. Some people also like to add these to the sleeve protectors that I'm going to talk about here in a second but just find the method that works best for you. That brings us to our student activity book. If we bind the teacher's book, do I recommend binding the student activity book? Not at all, because like I said, there are a lot of moving pieces within this book. Yes, there are reading sheets that kind of stay stationary, but we've got word flipper cards that help your child learn to read by adding just a different beginning or ending sound. And these need to be assembled. So you definitely do not want to spiral bound this material. You actually want to take it apart. You can do it a couple of different ways. 
One, you can just take the full binding off and take it apart the same way that they will when you take it in to get bound. Um, but it also has perforated pages. You can pull out one at a time and just prep as you go, maybe the night before. For me though, I find it most helpful to prep the entire year in advance so that when it comes time to actually do my reading lessons, I have no excuse not to get started because my material is already prepared. So what I will do is I will tear out the pages for the different lessons. Every single page is labeled for what lesson it goes with, which I really appreciate. It makes it so much easier to keep track of things. And I'm going to take that apart and I'm going to start putting it in sleeve protectors. I recommend getting a three inch binder. You can get smaller, but a lot of times not all the pages will fit. So order a three inch binder. I'll put my favorite down in the link below and you will get that as well as a whole bunch of sheet protectors. I'll post my favorite sheet protectors down in a link below for you guys. The ones that hold up the best, but are still good price. And for each lesson, I'm just going to take out those pages. I'm going to pull all those out. I'm going to put the fluency sheet into the page protector and then anything that needs to be cut out or prepped in advance, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and slide it into the sleeve protector as well. If you want a little ed added extra level of protection, you could put the individual games within an envelope. I think that is what I'm gonna be doing this year, this time around, um, because some lessons have multiple games and activities. So having the pieces all together, either in a Ziploc bag or in a little envelope, inside of your sheet protector can help keep it from getting all mixed up and makes for a great tool if you wanna utilize a game and redo it in the future to practice with those extra skills. Any sheet that has the dotted lines on here, you are going to cut out along the dotted lines. And if you need to staple it, they will have a picture of a staple along the side as well for your foot book. Definitely be on the lookout for pages like this where on the back, you'll notice you have word cards that you're going to cut out, but then you also have slots on the back with the dotted line that you'll just need to slit across because for this particular activity, they're going to be going in and dropping their mail in the correct mailbox that correlates with that different beginning blend. This process can take a while, and I'm not gonna lie, your hand's probably gonna cramp up a little bit from the amount of cutting. However, it is very mindless work and I find this to be a perfect time to catch up on whatever TV show you have or audiobook you're listening to. Maybe have some friends over and have an all about reading prep party. If you choose to work on it over time, I recommend finding a central location to place all of your supplies in so that you could just pick up the project the next time you're ready to work on it. You can cut apart these things slowly over time a little bit each night or just spend one giant day working on it. But getting those things already prepped in those holders will make things so much easier because then when it comes time to actually do a lesson in the day, all you have to do is grab your teacher's book that's already spiral bound and ready for you and then grab out that one sleeve protector for that lesson for the day and it has all the supplies you need. Some people will like to put, like I mentioned before, the word cards that you are gonna use for that day that are gonna be introduced into the sleeve holder um, and some prefer to keep it in a box. But it's just about what option works best for you. I do recommend after you have your materials prepped that you take the time and opportunity to read through the first few pages of the teacher's manual. It is going to give you a rundown of how the program works, a few tips and tricks, frequently asked questions, those important details that you may need to know. And while this video can be helpful in how to put things together, you can find additional reference tools in there that may help you and your family. Now that you've got that prepped and you've read your first few pages, you're ready to start your first lesson. All you need to do is grab your binder full of your sleeve protectors and grab the teacher's manual and get going. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my 10 things you should know about All About Reading and drop your All About Reading questions down below. I will be doing a video coming up in the future where I do a review of the new edition and how I like it and what I like or don't like about it. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.